Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do a video on the Futaba DLPH, the dual power hub. It's, uh, it's been out for a little while. Um, I just got my hands on a couple of them to throw in some airplanes uh, for this season. So I'm going to walk through today the setup, just on the bench, not in the model. Um, just how to connect it up to your receivers, your batteries, uh, your servos, just some options, uh, some programming in the transmitter. Uh, just sort of show you how to do that and then it's a pretty quick uh, transition from the bench into the plane plug everything in and you're off to the races um, I don't do tons of videos uh, but I thought this one was interesting enough to, to show everybody so if you like it hit the like button hit the subscribe button and that way you're notified when I do post content um, and we'll get away and get on the devices here and we'll start to show you how to set this thing up so that's what you're gonna get in the mail. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this, uh, show you what's in it, kind of have a few um, looks at the certain sections of the manual, uh, and then we'll get into the setup. First open it up, some uh, fine print manual. So that's the device itself. Wrapped up in some plastic there. So you got uh, two XT60s uh, for the battery, the main, the dry, I guess the power battery connections. Um, you got all your servo um, and S bus connections here. So it's a little tricky to see probably, but on the front. You know, this does have S bus through channels 1 through 16, S bus 2, and then the switch. On the side, you do have a voltage selector depending on the, the batteries you're running here. So either 6.6 um, .6 volts, 7.4 volts, or 11.1 volts. So it is regulated to the receiver. So this isn't like a regulated output, um, it's mainly just for indication of uh, the battery health or condition, I guess, when you, when you power up. Um, and then on the top you have receiver 2, so that's your backup receiver, receiver 1, your primary receiver, the S bus 2 port uh, for telemetry devices, you do not want to plug those into the receiver, and then channel 3 if you're plugging in, uh, if this is going in an electric airplane, and you're plugging a speed control into that, um, so you're going you're gonna to need to use that if you're doing that. So that's the, that's really the whole, the whole box there. Um, they also include in the second little bit of plastic here the famous uh, Futaba screwdriver. This is an E switch, they call it. Uh, so, <clears throat> looks like a normal switch, but it is more of an electronic type switch. So, when you turn it on, it, it fires the device up. Um, and if it fails, or you unplug it, or you cut the wire, or anything like that, the device stays on. So it, it's not a switch in the conventional sense of passing power through it, it's just turning the device on, and then it's not turning the device off until you turn it off, and if it fails, the device remains on. So it's a, it's a safe switch. If anyone's familiar with uh, the Jim Adino switches of old days, it's similar to some of those. And then a couple of you know, mail to mail extensions, and this is really just power to get your uh, receivers plugged into here. So basically, from your receiver port uh, into the DLPH box. And then some grommet screws, eyelets, and whatnot um, to put in the little mounting tabs here. Uh, well, I need to screw this into the airplane. Okay, let's go through the manual a bit here. So, DLPH1. So it's use, two receivers, two batteries, communication switching device, two and a half inches by two and a half inches by 0.7 inches, 1.76 ounces or 50 grams, uh, 6.4 volts to 13 volts, and these are the accessories. <laughs> Basically two LiPos or L L Liffies, uh, two receivers, SBUS um, or SBUS2 compatible systems, and up to 18 servos. I'm not even sure I have 18 servos, so I can't test that. Uh, main receiver works. That's what it's talking to. If it has problems, it switches over to the sub-receiver. 
and then once the main receiver recovers it switches back. So you need to link the receivers uh, in dual receiver mode so you have two receivers linked in the transmitter. We'll go through how to do that. Telemetry is available when you're using the dual receiver function. When you're not using the dual receiver function there is no telemetry available. Uh, battery failsafe so you need to set this to 4.8 volts or less or off uh, because the receiver is regulated. The failsafe settings between each receiver must be the same. So you don't want them different. So right here, since the output voltage is 5 volts, if the battery failsafe is set to 5 volts or higher, it will always operate. So in other words, you won't be able to fly. Details on the wiring. So, warning, do not supply receiver power from the ESC. So you need to remove the red power cord from your ESC if you're using this in an electric model. Uh, main receiver goes into channel 1, receiver 1, sub receiver goes into receiver 2, ESC goes into this channel 3 spot, and your telemetry devices, so whatever you have, airspeed or altitude or any of this SBUS telemetry devices plug in here, um, you select the voltage on this side here between 6.4, 7.6 or 11.4 voltage. <clears throat> so basically a 2 cell LIFI, a 2 cell LiPo or a 3 cell LiPo, that's what you're going to select that voltage based on. Battery, uh, main power battery 2, main power battery 1, and then all your servos. Your switch goes into this first port e-switch, this second port your SBUS 2 port, all of your servo channels, and then your final SBUS port. Place in a well ventilated area. And always make sure your antennas are in different orientations. The dual battery system, so it's going to switch between these batteries, whichever one's higher, it's supplied, it drops, it's going to switch, it drops, it's going to switch, back and forth, back and forth, basically until you get low voltage. And there is telemetry for these two batteries. I'll show you how to set that up as well so you can set some alarms. Okay, so pre-plugged all this stuff in <coughs> based on the instructions. So again, e-switch, first connector here. I got a couple uh, 171 servos over here, just plugged into a couple of random channels, doesn't really matter for the purposes of testing this and kind of showing you how to set it up. <clears throat> two 7008 receivers and two uh, Thunder Power 2S um, 4000 LiPos. So my uh, battery switch is at 7.4 volts, so for the 2S LiPos. I've already linked these, but I'm going to show you in the 32 how to link these. Uh, receivers. So the way I did it is I basically started uh, with receiver number one and I just disconnected um, the one receiver. So <clears throat> let's go into here. You'll see these are, so you want to set this to dual. Um, I'll just rewrite this. So set this to dual. If it's, if it's, if it's in single, hit it, set it to dual. So you're now set to dual. So it gives you the option to link two receivers, your telemetry is active, your download interval one second, those are kind of default. So we're going to link receiver one. You want to set this again 4.8 volts, right? So you can set it now. You're better to set it now than do the link first, set it afterwards, because if you adjust it after you link, you're going to have to relink it. So set this um, to 4.8 volts, and then you're going to go ahead and hit link. It's going to do its thing, and we only got one one on here so we're going to turn this on and you'll see the red light and it should switch green and this little light on here should switch green and bang. So this receiver is linked and you'll see link and if we close this you know it's going to have a have a an ID number associated with that. <clears throat> so I'm going to shut this off now and I'm going to now plug in the second receiver And I'm just going to unplug that first one because it's already linked. And we're going to repeat this now for the second one. So we're going here, we push link again, 4.8 volts, hit link, we we'll turn this on, lights are going to be red, and they're going to flip over to green. So now we have both linked. So I'm going to shut this off again, close it to there, and we're going to plug this in. So we can go ahead now and test everything's working. So we got 
both receivers green here, you do get the same receiver indication lights there. Um, green is good, uh, red is not good. So if you get red, much like if you get it here, that's an indication that uh, you have an issue. So if it's off, you're just not getting, if that light's off, you're not getting any signal. So I can show you on that. So if I was to just shut the transmitter off, right, you know, those lights are all going to go red. So you're, you've got a receiving issue, right? As we mentioned before, fail safe switch. So this is an on position, off, it goes off, on, it comes on, right? All good. Servos, servos move, right? If I take this switch and I unplug it, so now you can see I have no more switch. So basically I cut the line, right? Servos are still moving. So there's your fail safe on the switch. So because it's an electronic switch like that, it will draw some power. So you will want to uh, unplug your batteries from this device uh, if you're going to leave it for any kind of length of time or there's probably a good chance that uh, you can drain your receiver packs. It's a good practice anyway. So again, do a receiver. So let's test out what happens if I lose a receiver. So I'm just going to unplug a receiver here. Do it from there. So we lost this receiver. So it's gone dark now. This green light is no longer green. We do have one receiver left and everything's still functioning. All good. Right? Let's do it for the other one. We unplug that one. Nope, we lost that. So the light's gone green. The receiver fell out of the airplane. And we can still fly. So all good there. Same thing with the batteries. We lose a battery. Right, it just ejects itself, so that never happens. And we still have our servos. So pretty redundant, kind of lose, you know, lose receivers, lose batteries. You know, have your, you know, wire leads break or connections fail or whatever. Um, and you're still gonna have control of your airplane. So telemetry wise, so you do get, again, like I mentioned, you're gonna get this five volt um, coming back on the receiver, you know, so that's kind of your default telemetry that you can get off a receiver for any any of the S bus uh, fastest uh, transmitters. So, <clears throat> but that doesn't really tell you much, you know, it tells you receivers, but you know, if that thing goes to 4.8, um, it means your batteries are at 4.8 and you're probably long crashed. So you really want to know what these are. Um, so it does have, and I've, again, I've already set this up. Um, it does have your voltage of each pack in there. So you could see if I, if I lost a battery, right, you can see that's going to drop out to zero. If I plug that one back in, it's going to come back, right? So that'll give you the indication of your actual receiver pack. So you definitely want to set that up. Now, you know, you need to be on SBUS 2. You can um, use SBUS to control all this from these receivers, um, but you will lose the ability to get that telemetry. If you run the SBUS 2, then you can get it. So how do you set that up? <clears throat> um, so we're going to go over to our linkage menu. We're going to go to sensor. And in here, um, you're going to want to probably uh, like reload, like blank these out, maybe if you've got some stuff in there. Anyways, you're going to put this on, you're going to go into number six, hit voltage, right? And you're going to put it on ID number one. And it's going to automatically, when you hit voltage, give you a second one in there. It's going to recognize that that sensor is there. And it should pop up on um, this voltage and external voltage screen. Um, in your telemetry. So that's all I did. It was pretty simple. Uh, if you're having issues, um, you can put it in the comments. I'll try to duplicate what you're doing and see if I can't uh, help you solve the issue. So one thing I was a bit concerned about, um, you know, there's just the one port for SBUS. So if you're running like terminal blocks out to servos, you know, so let's say you got a couple of these guys in your plane and you're going to run from this port, this is your SBUS port, 
to a terminal block, maybe gang it to another terminal block, and then distribute out to uh, your servos. You know, that's potentially a fair bit of draw coming through a single uh, servo lead. Um, so what what I checked, I checked the con continuity of the positive and negative pins on this board, and they are common, so any positive pin is common with another positive pin, and negative common with another negative. The signal pins are obviously independent. Um, so really you have you have a lot of pins here that you could pull from. So um, what I'm going to do on my plane is I'm going to feed, you know, I'm going to feed the signal off the S-Bus and a set of power leads off the S-Bus. And I'm probably going to feed a second um, or maybe even a third set of just power leads, no signal. So basically take a male to male and take the white wire off into my terminal blocks uh, just to help distribute that power through a few more pins. So I'm not pulling all of the load on, say, 789 servos through a single pin and connector. Um, it's probably not an issue most of the time, but you know, high speed, high loads on the servos, you could put you know a fair significant draw through that single connection. So, so just you know that is all common there. Um, so it should behave basically like a power bus, um, and and as long as you're not putting signal into there, um, it shouldn't really cause any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my plane. Um, you can, however your setup is, if you're running, you know servos off each one of these pins, then obviously it doesn't matter. Um, I think it's generally going to be when you're running full S-Bus um, to a lot of servos, you're going to want to maybe just pay attention about how much current you're passing through those wires and making sure that you have enough enough of them to kind of distribute it um, across a few of these pins and connectors. So that's it in a nutshell on the Dual Link uh, Power Hub from Futava. I uh, hope you liked the video, hope you learned something. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or anything else you might want to see me do a bit of a review on or a setup video on, put it in the comments below. Always uh, like and subscribe to the video so you get notifications when I post content. And have a good night and safe flying.